Songs of Two by Arthur Sherburn Hardy. One last night I dreamed this dream, that I was dead, and as I slept, forgot of man and God, that other dreamer's sleep of rest, I heard a footstep on the sod, as of one passing overhead, and lo, thou, dear, didst touch me on the breast, saying, what shall I write against thy name, that men should see? Then quickly the answer came, I was beloved of thee. Too dear giver of thyself when at thy side, I see the path beyond divide, where we must walk alone a little space, I say. Now my strong need, to wait with only memory a while, content, until I see thy face, could yet turn, as one in sorest need, to ask once more thy giving grace, so, at the last of all our partings, when the night hath hidden from my failing sight the comfort of thy smile, my hand shall seek thine own to hold it fast. Nor wilt thou think for this the heart in great, less glad for all its past, less strong to bear the utmost of its fate. Three as once through forest shade I went, I heard a flower call, and bend then strove to go. Should love not spare? Nay, dearest, this is love's sweet share of selfishness. For which is best, to die alone, or on thy breast? If thou hast heard my call, take fearlessly, thou art my guest, to give is all hush. O oh, love, thou cassuest. For ask me not why, I only know, it were thy loss, if I could show thee cause, as for a lesser thing. Remember how we searched the spring, but found no source, so clear the sky within its earth-bound depths did lie, give to thy joy its wings, and to thy heart its song, nor try with questionings the throbbing throat that sings. Five four in thy clear, and steadfast eyes thine own self wonder deepest lies, nor any words, that lips can teach, are sweeter than their wonder speech. And when thou gives them to me, through dawns of tenderness I see, as in the water sky, the sun of certainly appear. So, ask me why, for then thou knows, dear. Six to give, is more than to receive, men say but thou hast made them one. What if, some day, men bade me render back the gifts I cannot pay, since all were undeserved, should I obey? Lo, all these years of giving, when we try to own our thanks, we hear the giver cry, Nay, it was thou who gives, dear, not I. If wisdom smile, let wisdom go. All things above this is the truest, that we know because we love, not love because we know. Seven let it not grieve thee, dear, that love is sad, who, changeless, loveth so the things that change, the morning in thine eyes, the dusk within thy hair, were it not strange, if he were glad he cannot keep thy heart from care, or shelter from the whip of pain the bosom, where his head hath lain. Poor sentinel, that may not guard the door, that love itself unbarred, who in the sweetness of his service knows its incompleteness, and while he sings of life eternal, feels the coldness of death's wings. Eight stoop with me, dearest, to the grass one little moment ere we pass from out these parched and thirsty lands. See, all these tiny blades our hands stretched supplicating to the sky, and listen, dearest, patiently, dost thou not hear them move? The myriad roots that search, and cry as hearts do, love, feed us, or let us die. Nine beloved, when far up the mountain side we found, almost at eventide, our spring, how far we did fear lest it should dare the trackless wood and disappear. And lost all heart, when on the crest we stood and saw it spent in mist below. Yet ever sure was its flow, and, ever gathering to its own new springs, of which we had not known, to fairer meadows swept exultant from the woodland shadows, and when at last upon the baffling plain we thought it scattered like a rebel skein, lo, tranquil, free, its longed-for home, the wide unfathomable sea. Ten thy names are like sweet flowers, that grow within a garden where I go, sometimes at dawn, to see each one life its head proudly in the sun, sometimes at night, when only by the fragrant air, I know them there. And none are grieved, or think I slight their worth, if closest to my breast, this one I take which holds within its own each single fragrance of the rest, my friend, my friend. And as I loved it first alone, so shall I love it to the end, for none were half so dear were it not best. Eleven my every purpose fashioned by some thought of thee, those are feathers weight, that shapes the arrow's flight it be, no single joy complete in which thou hast no fee, though thy share be the star, and mine its shadow in the sea, thy very pulse my pulse, thy every prayer my prayer. Thy love my blue overreaching sky, that bounds me everywhere, yet free, beloved, free, for this encircling air I cannot leave behind, doth but love's boundlessness declare. Twelve last night the angel of remembrance brought me, while I slept think, dear, of all his store, just that one memory I thought banished forever from our door. Thy sob of pain, when once I hurt thee sure. Then in my dream I suddenly was ware of God above me saying, Reach thy hand to me in prayer, and I will give thee pardon yet. Thou, nay, she hath forgiven, teach her to forget. Thirteen love me not, dearest, for the smile, the tender greeting, or the while by which, unconscious of its road, my soul seeks thine in its abode, nor say I love thee of thine eyes, quote for when death shuts them, where thy skies, but love me for my love, then am I safe from all surprise, and thou above the loss of all that dies. Fourteen dear hands, forgiving hands, there is no speech so sure as thing. Lips falter with, so much to tell, eyes fill with thoughts I scarce divine, but thy least touch soul understands. Dear giving, taking hands, there are no gifts so free as thine. One last gem from the heart of the mine, one last cup from the veins of the vine, from the rose to the wind one last sweet breath, then poverty, and death. But thy dear palms are richest empty, asking alms. 
15 a little moment at the end of day, left over in the candlelight on the shore of dreams, on the edge of sleep, too small to throw away, too put to keep. But it holds two words for thee, dear friend, good night, good night. And so this remnant of the day, left over in the candlelight on the shore of dreams, on the edge of sleep, becomes too great to throw away, too dear to keep. 16 Beloved, when I read some fine conceit, wherein are ought, as in glass the features love hath made so sweet, I marvel at so bold an art, seeing thou art too dear to praise upon the highway where men pass. For when I seek to tell the ways God's hand of tenderness hath touched thine earthly part, again I hear thy first own cry of happiness, and, sweetest of God's sounds, the dear remonstrance of thy giving heart, and cannot speak. 17 Across the plain of time I saw them marching all night long, the endless throng of all who ever dared to fight with wrong. All the blood of their hearts, the prime and crown of their fleeting years, all the toil of their hands, the tears of their eyes, the thought of their brain, for a word from the lips of truth, for a glimpse of the scroll of fate, ere love and youth were spent in vain, and even truth too late. Oh, when the silence speaks, and the scroll unrolls to the eye of the soul, what will it be that shall pay the cost of the pain gone waste and the labor lost? And then, dear, waking, I saw you, and knew. 18 We thought when love at last should come, the rose would lose its thorn, and every lip but joys be dumb when love, sweet love, was born that never tis should start to rise, no night over to a calm morn, nor any guest of grief surprise, where love, sweet love, was born. And when he came, O oh heart of mine, and stood within our door, no joy our dreaming could divine, was missing from his store. The thorns shall wound our hearts again, but not the fear of yore, for all the guests of grief and pain shall serve him evermore. Nineteen dost thou remember, dear, the day we met in those bare woods of May. Each had a secret unconfessed, each sound a promise, in each nest. Young wings a-tremble for the air, how we joined hands, not knowing where the springs, that touch set free should find their sea. Speechless so sure we were to share the unknown good to be. Twenty the woods are bare again. There are no secrets now, the buds are scar, no promises, this is the end. Ah, dearest, I have seen thee bend above thy flowers as one who knew the dying wood should bloom anew. Come, let us sleep, perchance God's countenance, like thine above thy flowers, smiles through the night upon us too. Thanks for watching the channel. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Or if you would like to support the channel, please visit the link in the description to visit our Patreon page. Like the pictures in the video. Visit the link in the description to see more. Thanks again for watching.